The other day I was digging around on GitHub looking for new Docker projects to take a look at and share with you guys when I ran across a repository called Memos. According to their website, Memos is a lightweight, open source, self-hosted memo hub. Memos provides the privacy, security, and reliability that innovators need in their moment of inspiration. But before we get too much further into this, here's a quick message from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Linode. I've been partnered with Linode for quite a while now because it's a great place to host just about anything you could want to host. Need a dedicated space to host an app? Linode has you covered with more than 100 pre-built apps that can be installed with just a couple of clicks. Want to develop an app on your favorite flavor of Linux? Linode has you covered there too with more than 30 different options to start with. Need to do some pen testing on your own network or app? Install a Kali Linux setup in just a few clicks to get started with testing your own security. You can also host a Docker setup, a Kubernetes cluster, and more with just a few clicks. From hosting a single website to complex multi-cloud deployments, find enterprise level capabilities like object storage, Kubernetes, and GPUs at a 30 to 50% lower cost than the major cloud providers. Be sure to check out the link in the video description to get $100 in free credit for 60 days to see what you can do with Linode. <laughs> Just because I'm not exactly sure where else to put this in the video, I did want to mention that Memos is surprisingly lightweight as the Docker image is less than 40 megs and the memory usage hovers around 30 megabytes, uh, for me at least, based on what Portainer says. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at a demo of Memos, that's weird to say, that I've got on my local server. And if you'd like to check out a demo for yourself, they have made one available that I'll link in the video description. This is my demo version of Memos, and I really like the simplicity of the layout, and everything is more or less where you'd expect it to be. At the top left is your username, and if you're an admin, you'll see a mod tag next to your username. If you click your username, you can see a few menu items like archived, about, and sign out. Clicking archived will show you any memos that you've archived. Clicking about will give you the current version of your memos installation. Also, if there's an update available, you'll get a banner across the top of the page. And if you're using Portainer, it's super, super easy to update with just a couple of clicks. And sign out does, well, exactly that. It, it signs you out. Below that, you'll see how many memos you have, how many tags you have, and how many days you've been active. Next, we'll see a familiar activity chart, like something you might see on sites like GitHub. In the links below that, you'll see that we have something called daily review. And if you click that, you'll get a summary of the memos that you've posted on each day. And you can navigate back and forth through the days to see the memos you posted on each of those individual days. There's also this share button next to the navigation arrows that generates an image of the summary of that day that you can download and share if you'd like. Uh, you can also do things like rotate the image, but I'm really not sure what the purpose of that might be, at least not in my use case. Next, there's an explore option that lets you see any posts that have been made publicly or partially available by either you or other users on the site. Resources are just that. They are resources that you can either upload to the server or pull from remote servers, and you can attach those resources to your memos. The last link in this section is called Settings, and there are a few things in here to take a look at. First, under Basic, you can edit your account and password, as well as see open API information that you might use for third-party integrations. Next is Preferences, where you can change the language to one of the more than a dozen options. You can also change the theme to match your system, or you can manually set to a light or dark theme. And if you know me, I always prefer the dark theme. Under the next subsection, you can change the default memo visibility, enable something called a folding memo, or enable di or disable the ability to edit a memo just by double clicking it. Under the admin section, there's a members link where you can create a new user and or view the existing users on the site. If you click the system link under basic, you can do things like change the server name, view the size of the SQLite database, and run a compression slash vacuum on it to reduce its size. Under setting, you can allow or disallow user signups and public memos. And below that, there are a couple of text boxes for adding CSS and JavaScript. There are also a couple of new options that are, that are currently listed as beta. Uh, the first one is storage that allows you to use Cloudflare's R2 as storage for the app. And the other beta feature is a single sign-on that allows you to use GitHub, Google, or a custom SSO provider. The last area on the left is where you can create shortcuts and view tags so that you can sort your memos based on the aforementioned shortcuts and tags. 
On the right side of the page, there's a logo and an RSS feed link uh, that if you click that, will do that. It will just give you an RSS of the public posts that are available on the site. And there's actually a search feature over there that works really, really well. Below that, you can create memos that include tags, to-do lists, code blocks, the resources that we mentioned before, or you can use the full screen to write your memos if you like. Before you post your memo, you can change the visibility of it to be only visible to you, visible to members, or set it so that everyone can see it, and that would make it completely public. Once you post your memos, they show up below this area in chronological order, newest first. I think what surprises me most about this setup is that even with everything that we've covered, deploying this only takes about nine lines of Docker Compose. So let's take a look at that next. So what we've got here is a uh, version three Docker Compose and only one service listed. And of course it's memos. The image is the latest version of the memos container and the container name is unsurprisingly memos. There's just a single volume to store the container and its files. And the last part of the Docker Compose is the port, which is set at 5230. But if you need to change that, be sure to only change the first instance of 5230 and don't change anything after the colon. Once you've got your Docker Compose configured the way you need it, you can deploy this either via command line or via portainer. Either one is perfectly acceptable. Uh, give it a couple of minutes to come up and then you can attach uh, your, your favorite reverse proxy or Cloudflare tunnel set up to this in order to access this remotely. And honestly, that's all there is to getting memos set up. I really do like this for a quick, simple, easy to use memo slash note taking service. But let me know in the comment section down below if this is something that you would use on your setup or if you have a different note taking or memo taking service that you prefer. Let me know all of that in the comment section down below. Also, I often forget to mention this, but if you'd like to get access to my content with no ads in it, that's no sponsor spots, that's no YouTube ads, none of that kind of stuff, you can become a channel member uh, become a patron, or you can join dbtech.fans and get access to a, a fairly substantial part of my library uh, with no ads in it. So definitely check that out in the links below if you'd like to do that. Otherwise, you can just check out the videos when they go public because often I do release these videos early. But with all that said, I am gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I do wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.